All right. Hey, everyone, and welcome back to the second part of Complicated Times with Simple Solutions. So if you missed the first one, which were, was legal issues um, and the simple, is, um, simple solutions to your legal problems that you usually um, arise in your business, you should go back and watch the first one. And this one, we're going to be talking about board, board business. And that is whether you have an advisory board or you have a traditional board. So it can be anything from your board um, that is uh, volunteering and a nonprofit, your advisory board, which is also volunteering, but it's not a board that governs you. Or it can be even if you're getting into like S Corp, C Corp status and you have a paid board. Okay. So we're just talking about board business and how to keep it simple. So if this is your first time catching us, my name is Tracy V. Allen. I am the owner of TVA Consulting, where I help change agents, because I'm just going to say change agents, because this is Change Agents TV, um, even though I help social impact businesses, but they are change agents, right? So <laughs> we help change agents to design, build, and fund their social ventures so that they can live the lifestyle that they desire. While impacting their communities. <laughs> that part, girl. Yep. Mm -hmm. My name is Ty Boone. I'm owner of Ty Boone Enterprises. I work mostly with nonprofit organizations, helping them to move from startup and struggle to sustainability and success. And I want to say something real quick that if you are a nonprofit organization and you do not have a board, you are not a nonprofit organization <laughs> because you are required. Very, very true. Yeah. And I literally, I was telling you about somebody before I got on here and I found out that they don't have a board. Mm. Yeah. They, they don't have a board. So I'm <laughs> like, you are out of compliance in so many ways at this point in time. If you don't put your business together, you are going to lose your nonprofit status. And that is a real, real possibility. So mm -hmm. when we talk about boards, if we're talking about nonprofit, we're talking about um, who you have on your board, right? Keeping it simple. Who are you, who do you need? And we've done other um, board related um, videos before, but who do you need? So who are you serving first? Mm -hmm. Based on who you're serving, who are the best people to be on your board to interact with the people that you're serving? So if you're doing something in the education field, so your nonprofit is filling the gaps in the learning um, in the educational system, you definitely want to have who on there? A teacher or mm -hmm. principal, somebody who's in education at least needs to be on your board. Then you need to have other people that are in and around the education field that have a sphere of influence within the community to sit on your board again. It should not be your friends, your family members, and just because, mm -hmm. right? You don't need yes people around you for your board. You need people who are truly going to help you to build this organization and expand and create that impact that you're looking for. And, you know, there are so many founders who, you know, start and they, they select yes people because they don't want the rejection. They yes. want people who are going to be on their team. Um, and when you're talking about, you know, who should be there, nonprofit organizations are for the people by the people, right? Yes. So your board represents the people mm -hmm. that you serve. The craziest thing is to have a board full of folks that have no clue about the population that you serve. Because guess what? These people are going to be making decisions about how the funding goes to the, the people that you serve. They're going to be making decisions about how the organization is ran. And if they don't represent the people, it doesn't make sense. Right. right? It doesn't make sense. You, you know, but another I, thing is they can't be too closely representing the people because then it starts posing a conflict of interest. So there's a fine line that you have to, it's like walking a tightrope mm -hmm. and making sure that you maintain your balance. And mm -hmm. I can kind of explain what I mean. So if you have a nonprofit, like I said, that is in the education um, industry and you are dealing with, um, you know, closing that gap. Now you can't have somebody on your board that also has a nonprofit or even a for-profit organization mm -hmm. that deals exactly with the same thing. The, the, the problem comes in is that more than likely you guys are going to be going after the same sources of funding. Mm -hmm. You're going to be networking in the same field and it's going to be so competitive between you guys. It doesn't even make sense. How can you have somebody sitting on your board, helping you to make decisions that is in essence, 
sabotaging you for themselves, right? Like, okay, <laughs> y'all are gonna apply for that. We're gonna apply for that too. I always talk about graduating when I talk mm-hmm. about board, and I said, you know, especially when you're dealing with special populations, and you know, let's say you're working with a homeless population, and you get somebody on your board who used to be homeless that says mm-hmm. not homeless anymore. Because right. what happens if you put someone in this position who is still in the situation, mm-hmm. right? The resources that you're bringing into your organization, they're going to want to take a part of those resources, which they can't yes. because it's conflict of interest. So I can't mm-hmm. get it. You can't give me the food and the clothes and the things and all this stuff because I'm a board member. But if I've graduated from this situation, I can give you some input on the population and what happens and what and, and do my and do my part. But I mean, we see just a whole lot of junk, <laughs> and I hate to say it like that, on boards where you have people, like you said, Tracy, who there are obvious conflicts of interest. I'm mm-hmm. talking about obvious, like, okay, we got the same youth mentoring program, right? <laughs> where I come in and I say, I'm going to be yeah. on your board so you could partner with me. First of all, what is yes. that? Yes. What is that? Yes. About, right? <laughs> We're, I'm, I'm supposed to be here serving you. What are we partnering for? That's what mm-hmm. my job on the board is to serve this organization, not for you to serve me, mm-hmm. because that's not what this is about. So then you end up in this partnership mess, right? It's not a partnership, it's a usership. <laughs> this way, and you got know, I did a webinar and I said, you know, there's a difference between using and utilizing. Yeah. Right. I think we talked about it here already yeah. too. <laughs> yeah. and, and when you find yourself on somebody or somebody's on your board and they're benefiting more than the organization is, they're mm-hmm. using you to 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 to, to elevate themselves. And then mm-hmm. it becomes a personal gain situation, which is conflict of interest. Yeah, I've sat on boards where I've seen where people have sat down in the board meetings, their board members, and actually take the play-by-play of that organization and then apply it to their own because their their businesses are so closely related. It's like, I don't even need to think for myself. I just need to come on over here to this board meeting and the ED is going to tell me the whole playbook and I just need to go and implement it in my organization. And, and keeping it simple, are, are people not implementing non-complete um, compete clauses anymore? You um, know... Um, I have to be honest, like, you know, I sit on a few boards. I don't think I signed another complete cause for one of them. And that's something I've talked to them about. I said, listen, I can basically do whatever I want because you didn't have me sign a non-complete clause. We need to get our board packages together. Like your board package is lacking. I said, there should be actually a package that's given that the um, new board members assign. And the board, the board system needs to be streamlined. So when we talk about keeping it simple, simple solutions, the solution is having a checklist. These are the things that boards need, board and new board members need to know about the organization. These are the documents that they need to sign and have it in a package, whether it's digital or it's um, it's digital or it's in print, but you need to have it, right? Mm-hmm. And another thing when it comes to keeping it simple as well um, or simple solutions, you need to train your board members. A lot of the issues that happen on boards happen because people are not trained, mm-hmm. right? So people don't come onto boards in most cases, already knowing what it's like to be a board member. And mm-hmm. even if they had been a board member, what you do and what someone else does are not the same thing. So some people like to curve the law. They like to go around the law, <laughs> you, you know, and they like to go around policies and procedures. And then some people are straight laced. They go right down the middle of the policy and procedure because they're following the path of that they should be following. So you can't take it for granted that because someone has sat on a board before for many years on a particular board, that they are a good board candidate or they understand how to be on a board and how a board is ran. You Mm -hmm. can't take for granted that they know uh, parliamentary procedures, Mm -hmm. right? You can't take for granted that they know how to fundraise effectively. You need to have board trainings and board retreats. Mm -hmm. And and most of the, you know, if you, a lot of people, I folk who sat on big boards before, you know, Mm -hmm. you know, I want him because he was on this million dollar board. And, you know, not understanding that organizations are at different stages of growth. Right. So if you're if your organization is developing or growing and, and I've sat on an accomplished board, mm-hmm. I'm going to think differently when I come to your board. 
right? Because there are things that I'm going to have to do on your board that I didn't have to do up there because- Right, especially if you have a working board. Right. Yeah. And you may put me to work. And, you know, I, I, I joke about it all the time. I say, you know, I've sat on like big old boards before mm -hmm. and I didn't do nothing. Mm -hmm. Like I came in for that because I love lasagna, right? So I can't, oh like this one board was like, every time we met, we would mm -hmm. have like my favorite Italian restaurant and we would eat this. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of there for the, for the lunch, mm -hmm. right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> it was a huge organization, but I was there for. I'm like, okay, they didn't really need me. I didn't really need them. I'm just okay. Yeah, I'll be on the board because they had a whole fundraising person mm -hmm. that was hired to fundraise. Mm -hmm. They had a whole development department mm -hmm. that was raising funds. We were just there to talk about the get updates. Yeah, cool. That's this is what it is. And then when the big fundraising event happened, hey, we got a fundraiser going on. You know, y'all can help push this or whatever, and wear the pin, and we're good. Mm -hmm. if you're at a if you're at a smaller organization that's growing or developing, the roles is is different. You know, right. I didn't even got a budget to give me lasagna, so I got mad. Oh, at <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> but it's the truth, though. Um, and so again, just to recap, for keeping it simple with your board, making sure that you're choosing the right board members that they have the knowledge and there's no conflict of interest. Making sure you go over parliamentary procedures, that you have regular trainings on parliamentary procedures. I've seen some crazy stuff happen. <laughs> um, and just general training um, regularly. At least twice a year, you should be training your board, especially mm -hmm. when it comes to fundraising, which is a big part of being a board member um, and most bo on most boards is that your duty is supposed to be to fundraise, right? So making sure you have regular trainings around that and you're building a camaraderie around them so that your board doesn't become... Um, Mutinous. <laughs> you, you said you said regularly, and you said camaraderie, right? And you, yes. And then you said the, mut the mutiny thing, but that happens too, right? Boards, boards meet without you, and before you know it, you're not even working here no more. Like, no. Like, look, look, I mean, this is a real thing. This truly happens, mm -hmm. right? You have to have camaraderie with your board. So if there's somebody on your board that you don't like, you better make sure everybody else on the board likes you and likes what you're doing, because that one person person you know how they say one egg can spoil a bunch uh -huh. like yeah mutiny does happen on board remember, you know, all the same time. environment like you said of camaraderie so we're, mm -hmm. we're, team, we're in this together yeah you know one heartbeat one sound so we're we're trying to we, we have the same mission and, uh, and it's you know your job is, as the leader of the organization to ensure that you're creating this environment that everybody understands what the mission is and everybody yeah. understands the work that it's going to take to get to the vision everybody is on the same page and sometimes it doesn't happen like that because we're not doing things regularly like you said mm -hmm. you know it's like we're okay we given tuesday we won't have a meeting so we can figure out how we're going to fundraise yes or okay we need to have some money so now we're going to meet and see this goes back to what our first um uh, our first video in this episode legal issues because mm -hmm. all of that should be outlined in your bylaws mm -hmm. so there shouldn't be any even when it comes to emergency meetings those should be outlined in your bylaws how do we have an emergency meeting what mm -hmm. constitutes an emergency meeting mm -hmm. right who's the actual person who has to call that emergency meeting how many Can it be done via yeah. zoom phone yeah. whatever all mm -hmm. of that needs to be outlined outlined in your bylaws yep. keep it simple solutions come with um, planning really and truly that's what it comes having a plan in place for how things are done in your business um so yeah uh, so what Ty was talking about what I was talking about at the end of this video is going to be talked about fully in our next video which is about training and experience and this oh boy <laughs> this makes simple solutions um, effective you cannot have simple solutions unless you have a well-trained staff so let's talk about that. All right, All right. guys, until next time, bye-bye. <laughs>